Yo, welcome back to another Brain Dead. Um, yeah, I'm just door dashing right now, as you can see. Uh, and I, don't know, I was just listening to a CNBC thing with uh, Ron Barron. On it was like they break it up and put it on YouTube, so it's not like the full interview, but it was like some five minute segment. And I don't know, it was just breaking my brain, so I, I don't know, I thought I'd make a video and share my thoughts on it, like. Uh, I really admire Ron Barron, and I think he's super smart, and I like his philosophy, and uh, towards the end of the interview, he was kind of talking about, like, having a long time horizon, and I think that's super valuable, and I agreed with it, and, but, oh my gosh, like, the the older gentleman, it was like a, part of the, it was like the Squawk Box crew, the older guy, I don't know his name, but I like the guy, I got, yeah, I've heard him before, and sometimes I you know, have a take on something that I feel like he's a little bit more open-minded on things sometimes, but, uh, sometimes he just says the dumbest stuff, and, like, this was one of them, so, I, I don't know, I guess I wanted to, like, put my flavor, how my brain processed it, and, um, yeah, so, like, Ron Barron is literally going through, like, I think, like, maybe, like, 20 seconds earlier, uh, he said that he isn't, trying to predict the economy or the markets or like say where a bottom is and then this guy jumps into the conversation which yeah without having the full like video i think he wasn't even the one conducting the interview i think it was the becky chick but i think he just jumped in because he was curious and he's like so you know we talk about this a lot do you think the we go lower from here because a lot of other people are thinking that like ron Byrne literally just said that's not a thing I do is try to know where the price is going. He's like, all I know is these are attractive prices right now. I n have some model of what the value of these things I own are. And the price is below that at the moment. I mean, those weren't his words, but that's kind of like, I guess my summary of how his thought process would be going and kind of like analyzing that. Like he's not in the business of, and I'm not either of like trying to figure out, uh, yeah, is price going to be higher or lower tomorrow? Like, at the point where you're, that's what your game you're trying to play and trying to figure out, like, what it's going to do next in terms of price. And, like, the more your investing style is in reference to looking at some graph of a stock price, I think you're investing wrong. Like, the more effort that you're putting into actually understanding the things you own and what they're doing in this world and how valuable those things are, that's kind of, like, where then you start being, becoming an investor and... Um, in my mind doing it right but so yeah, I'm, I'm door dashing so like i guess time will tell like like i'm pretty successful so far i'd say but uh um yeah I, mean, I don't know but i think that's what the winning strategy will be is truly understanding value and yeah being long term but um yeah and, and what a complete missed opportunity like okay you have ron baron who's like already kind of more of like a philosophical type investor um like he literally just laid out to you that that's not his <laughs> uh skill set or philosophy or anything he's interested in or even applies effort to is determining what price is going to do and then you then the next question what do you think price is going to do it was just like the dumbest thing and you, you that, that, that's time that you could have been asking like okay you have this kind of like great investing mind why not ask him what valuable things you think are out there in the world like that's the thing that he's going to be able to put like a, a interesting flavor on not uh, i don't know it was it, like what was the the guy that does the food reviews it, like deeply um hurt me or something i don't know. but yeah that my brain broke from hearing that and I wish there could just be like a Ron Barron interview where they don't even talk about price or anything like that. Just like, where do you th see the world going? What are the companies that you think are making the biggest changes in this world? And like, what are the things about that company that makes them great? Not like, oh, the stock graph looks this way. Do you think whatever? And Or if it's, I don't know, some beta or I don't know. Like, I think that stuff is largely like overhyped and propped up and a lot of times people think that's what finance is and kind of is but i don't know i think that's kind of like dumb people finance to a degree like 
I think that's like surface level and that's what you do when you haven't like thought deeper about things but either way uh yeah go watch that Ron Baron thing and see if your brain melts too but like, I, I don't want to be critical I, I like the guy and he said things that I have liked in the past too so I guess I don't know I guess I'm just spreading negativity but I also wanted to like maybe like emphasize like yo when you have someone like this don't ask those questions like ask the things they're good at ask those things like that that's why I wanted to watch a Ron Barron interview for and then yeah then it just gets wasted by that stuff and then the fact that CNBC took that clip as the one to like share and put on YouTube and like this will be the click thing which I guess I clicked it but I don't think the headline was like implying that I was like oh Ron Barron sweet um it was more like, I guess, the thumbnail that got me, but, um, like, this is what everyone's gonna be interested in, is whether or not Ron Barron thinks it's a bottom, and, I don't know, I, to me, I feel like it's so much of just missing the point, and, uh, yeah, I wish there could just be, like, a, um, finance or investing kind of outlet or media source that like hardly even talks about price like maybe you can talk about price in rel in terms of like what something's intrinsic value is and that would be useful and i'd like that type of discussion but yeah so much of just like finance i guess media is just like oh this indicator saying this thing and i think that economy is doing x and i don't know i think it's all dumb but then i think like YouTube just started like auto playing something right after and they were talking about like uh the student loan repayment thing and how uh it could be like inflationary which yeah I think that is intuitive and makes sense like now that there's less of a debt burden less capital will go to paying off that burden and will go now to buying things that people want but I think uh also there's kind of like this largely misunderstood view of inflation like we use the word inflation to mean so many different things and we're like kind of they're all kind of like tangent to each other or tangent whatever the um so it's like hard to kind of sparse out like when it's like oh you're referring to it in this way in this way and so and since they're all so related that they kind of just like groups into you know it's hard to like kind of separate out the arguments but maybe that didn't even make sense but I think, yeah, prices will rise when there's now capital that is more able to flow into goods and services. Um, but I think not all inflation is bad inflation and like not all deflation is bad deflation or good. Like it's not, it's not good or bad intrinsically. Like in my mind, I think that inflation could be viewed as like a good inflation like it, it's information to the market of like these things are wanted more by people and now that information can now easily go to those manufacturers who produce those things and they can make now like the adjustments to be like oh uh, the market wants x amount of this thing and so we're going to start making more of those and start ramping up production and we'll buy another machine that can pump out a little bit more of them and start producing in increased orders of the raw materials and whatever now the system can start like kind of like factoring it all in um like the bad inflation the inflation that we don't want is in changing the money supply in like uh like now the whole system gets all messed up and then the information gets fuzzy and it's harder to pull the signal of like how much the world actually wants them some of something because or like what's the like equilibrium that you should be at and uh so like just because it's like a market being or prices rising i don't think should be be like oh here's inflationary therefore bad like yeah i'll probably raise prices but it's raising prices i think in like a useful way and showing like now the market just has more information of knowing what amount of a good or service uh the world wants and therefore should produce and it's not like it's 
yeah, I don't know. But that was probably a bad take, and I gotta think that out and word it way better, but I think a lot of this inflation talk is, like, just very, just, like, headline-y and uh, isn't actually, like, deeply understood, like, um, but, and it could even turn into deflationary. Now these companies have X amount of capital, like, the, the truly good things, because fun you're probably buying the things you want because those things are good and then capital just naturally flows to the things that we want more or the things that we're deeming as valuable and at least that's what you would hope would happen and then like once like certain I don't know, like subsidy things intermix or government whatever's then information can maybe start flowing in a different way but um, but if these now these companies that are making the things we want are just slightly more enabled, then they can increase production, and that will be a deflationary force. So, yeah, it's like everything's in waves. So, like, I don't think you... So, it's like, okay, inflationary for what time frame? Then you could have, you could also make an argument that's deflationary because if you just extend the time frame, which I guess to loop back to the uh, Ron Barron thing, um, I thought he made a pretty good point that, like... And I think he was quoting Elon Musk, but to have a long time frame like in i guess elon musk i think said to have like an infinite time frame which like yeah going to like finance school or like uh yeah i graduated with a finance degree in like a narrative to say like what's your time horizon and like that always felt so arbitrary like how do you know what the best time horizon okay i'll pick five years just randomly pick a number i guess and like in i think intrinsic or intuitively in the moment that felt like a little wrong for me like how do i determine what time frame is best for an investment and then what if it's still doing good oh i'm gonna take my money out like what if i own the best thing all right what five years up that was what my time horizon is let me take it back and now let's reassess oh it's still the best thing let me put it back in like i don't think a time horizon even is like a concept that has much use like maybe it's useful in if you feel it puts a it like is a safeguard like maybe you're like uh prone to like making a decision quick or whatever like oh no my time horizon is this i'll just let it sit there until the thing happens so to the degree that you need some like uh safeguard or yeah like kind of like then maybe it's useful to you but as like what's the optimal investing strategy i don't think a time horizon would ever make sense to me of like why that would be useful um you own, you should own things to the extent they're the most valuable things you can own. And as now there's a new, more valuable thing, then, okay, then you can put your capital into that thing or like to the degree that you have confidence of what is the most valuable. Like maybe you're like, okay, that could be this thing or this thing, but it, the paths can propagate in so many ways that you can't really exactly uh, be sure which is the most valuable. So, okay, you split it up. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of having an infinite time horizon. And then and then I kind of started thinking, like, uh, what could that be if taken to the extreme? Like, um, like, how far into the future could you make a decision right now that those people in the future would be like, dang, thank you, past humans. That was pretty convenient. Thank you for thinking of that. I wonder, like, how far into the future we can make a difference right now of, like, just something subtle. Like, like uh, kind of like the idea of, like, oh, you plant a tree here, and then, like, maybe in 200 years, people have a nice tree to sit under, and they have shade or something like that. Like, is there something as a society that right now we can do that won't even benefit people for, like, 5,000 years? And I think that'd be kind of cool to, like, you know, what is the most altruistic uh kind of like effective altruism with the longest time horizon um like i don't know the answer but that just is cool to i guess ponder and i guess i'll now probably start thinking about it but um and i also think that'd be kind of cool to start doing like it's something that could benefit humans in such a long time frame it would never benefit me or like anyone Life today, I guess, I don't know, longevity stuff maybe would have benefit us, but um, assuming we only live like 100 years, there's no way we would ever reap the benefits of this. 
and our children would never reap the benefits and their children would never reap the benefits but go like 30 generations now they can start benefiting it and it's something that takes that long to even like kind of build or make but it would be meaningful to a society that long for now um that's probably actually the further you go in time the, like the less you're going to even know what will be useful to them so i guess like you probably could, you can't even do that so there's probably like an extent of how long term you could be to where it actually is useful because yeah i think think about like humans 30,000 years from now they're like okay well thanks for kind of thinking of that but you guys didn't even know about this physics that just completely bypasses the need for even what you guys are creating so all right we appreciate the thought but it you know we didn't even need it so so i bet the further out you go it'll probably actually become a waste but um like maybe you could probably like do something in 200 years like they're really like oh fuck Thanks 200 years ago, civilization. That was very useful. We appreciate that. And maybe there's a bunch of things that we could do like that. But, okay. Kind of some scattered thoughts, but uh, maybe someone thinks one of them or a couple of them are cool. Uh, if you have any, I guess, thoughts, comment it. I, that'd be cool to hear. But otherwise, thanks for watching and like it and subscribe. Okay, peace.